Hey again, everybody, and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do some blueprint communication and communicating between several different types of blueprints as well as the level blueprint. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I have the blueprint first person template project up. I also have starter content enabled, so we have some things to play with. And first thing I'm going to do inside the blueprints folder here is just right click and create a brand new blueprint class. So once I do that, blueprint class, I'm going to choose the actor as the parent class. And I'm going to call this blueprint the movable cube blueprint. And what we're going to do is place this blueprint inside of our level and have our player character blueprint interact with it in a way so that we can move the cube around our level whenever a button is pressed by our player character. So let's go ahead and open up the movable cube blueprint here. And once we do so, we are inside the blueprint editor now, currently on the viewport tab. Uh, allowing us to see the components that we add to our blueprint. So let's go ahead and add some components in the upper left up here. Click the Add Component button and select the Static Mesh component here because we need to add a static mesh. It's going to prompt us to enter a name. I'm just going to call it the Cube Blueprint here. Then I'm going to hop over to the Details panel over here. And this is where all the properties that can be set to affect uh, this static mesh component. The only one we're really going to worry about is actually defining a static mesh. So let's go ahead and uh, search for cube and add a shape cube. Uh, actually, I am going to do one more. Let's see here. Let's compile and save really quickly. Uh, I am going to change the material because it is just a plain white. Let's make it a little bit more fancy. So I'm going to click this uh, material drop down here and let's search for gold. Let's make it a gold cube, a golden cube. There we go. Okay, going to hop over to the event graph now, and this is where we provide the scripted functionality for this blueprint. There's a couple nodes that are here by default. We're not going to worry about any of those. We're just going to right click, holding down the right mouse button, and drag those nodes off screen because we're going to add our own here. And let's right click again and release. And in the search bar, go ahead and search for custom event. Now, custom event will allow us to name the event as well as provide any kind of inputs uh, that we want to specify as variables for this event. So go ahead and click the Add Custom Event button. It's going to prompt us to enter a name. I'm just going to call it the Move Cube Event. And also with this custom event, we could call this custom event inside this blueprint. If I right click and say Move Cube Event, you can see that we can call that function here. But we can call, also call this externally from other blueprints. So that's exactly what we want uh, to be able to communicate with this blueprint. Uh, first thing we're going to do though is make sure that our custom event is selected here. And we're going to add an input here. So hop over to the Details panel. Go ahead and click the New button here. And you see it adds a new parameter uh, input here. We're going to change the type. We're going to change the type to a float. And we're going to give it a new name. We're going to call this the offset. And I'll explain why here momentarily. OK, with our custom event complete, uh, we're going to hold Control on our keyboard. And over in the My Blueprint window over here, you can see our cube static mesh that we added as a component. Left click and drag that in while holding Control. So that gets a reference to our component here. We're then going to left click and drag off of it, and we're going to add local offset. Now the local offset, once I hit enter here, will give us a new node. And what it will do is add uh, an X, Y, and Z offset to our current X, Y, and Z location in our world. So this is going to be perfect for us for what we're trying to do. If I drag off the delta location here and release, you can see there's an option to make vector down at the very bottom, which makes an X, Y, and Z uh, vector. So go ahead and select that. And you see it's asking for float values. For us, we're not going to worry about the X and the Y. We're only going to worry about the Z. And the Z will push us up into the air. And we're going to take our offset here and plug that into our Z. Now the offset is something that we can specify externally. And that will be provided to our make vector here and offset our current Z value for our cube. Makes a lot more sense we can, once we get into the level and playing. So go ahead and connect the uh, executable here by left clicking and dragging and plugging that into the add local offset like so. And with that, we can compile and save. And let's hop back over to the level now. First thing we need to do is actually drag and drop our movable cube blueprint into our level like so. And once we have it in our level, we're going to go up to the toolbar up here. There's a Blueprints option at the toolbar. Go ahead and click that. And in the middle, there's a section called Open Level Blueprint. 
Now the level blueprint is unique is a unique blueprint uh, that can only be accessed, as the name suggests, per level. So go ahead and open that up because we're going to affect this current level. And let's do one thing really quickly. I'm going to hop back over to the level real quick and make sure that our cube is still selected, which it is. I'm going to hop back to the level blueprint again. And now we can right click in the graph here. And you can see it says create a reference to the movable cube, which is stored in our level. We can now call uh, the functions inside our level blueprint because we have a reference to it. So go ahead and set, search for the move, uh, was it move cube was what we called it. Is that what we called it? Yep, the move cube, move cube event. So go ahead and select that. And once we do, you can see it creates two new nodes, the reference to our actor in our level and our custom event that was created inside of our blueprint. You can see it has the offset and the same name and it's asking us to supply an offset. So let's go ahead and put one in. We'll just say 200. And the last thing we need to do is right click in the graph again, press F to search for an F key event. Go ahead and select that. And off the pressed here, this is the pressed and released for the F key on your keyboard. Off the press, connect the executable to our move cube event. So with that, let's compile and let's hop back to the level and let's play. Now, whenever we press F, this cube should move up 200 units each time. So we press F, you see it goes up 200, goes up 200, goes up, goes up, goes up, every time we press F. So there we go. We are communicating from our player character blueprint to the level blueprint and from the level blueprint to our uh, actor movable cube blueprint here. So there's one more thing we want to do. We want to have our cube blueprint here interact with our player character blueprint in some way. So say, for example, we shoot it, uh, have, the, have it affect our player character in some way. Now, we don't have health or anything to display, so we're going to do something kind of funky, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, let's hop back to uh, our movable cube blueprint here. And what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do actually, is create an event dispatcher. So go ahead and click this event dispatcher button. It's going to ask you to enter a name for it. So we're going to call this the move player event. And what an event dispatcher will do if we just drag it into our level here, gives us a bunch of different options. We're going to choose the call uh, option here. So whenever this is called, inside any other blueprints where we implement this event dispatcher, that script will also get called. So let's, we'll show you this here in a moment. Let's right click again inside of our blueprint here and let's search for event hit. There we go, collision event hit. Go ahead and select that. And let's connect the executable pin here to our uh, event dispatcher. And what we're saying here is whenever this blueprint is hit, call our event dispatcher. So with that, let's compile and save. And then let's hop back to the level blueprint. Should Your tab should still be uh, open across the top here. Go ahead and hop back to our level blueprint. And let's right click and let's search for move player event. And there it is. Add our move player event from our movable cube blueprint. So there we go. This is our uh, event dispatcher that will get called whenever the uh, cube is hit. So let's right click one more time here and let's choose get player character. So we're going to get our player character. And what we're going to do now is use a cast node. And a cast node is a way to kind of verify if something is indeed something else. So what we mean by that is go ahead and drag off the return value here and search for cast to uh, well, I guess cast two works. <laughs> There's a couple options here. Uh, the one that we want to worry about is our uh, player character blueprint, which is our first person character blueprint. So cast two first person character. And then let's just connect like so. And then off this, once we have our first, char first person character blueprint, we want to do something with it. We're going to drag off here and say launch the character because that's fun. So there we go. Uh, let's actually do one last thing on the Z, just like the Z was for moving our cube up. Let's bump the Z up and launch the player character along the Z as well. We're going to put this up to 2000 just to make sure it works and launches our character up pretty high. So let's hit compile and let's go back to the level and play. 
and we press F, moves our cube up into the air, and we shoot it. Boom, launches our character in the air. Boom, yeah, keep launching me up. There we go, yeah. So there you go, we are interacting with our cube from our player character, and our cube is interacting with our player character when it is hit, so we're getting a little bit of back and forth. Hey, this could be a game in its own thing right there. How high can you get? How high can you get? Oh, no! I saw that going much better, but you get the idea. There we go, we are communicating between our cube way up there and our player character, and from our cube back to our player character. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time.